Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are back having another look at Harry. All right guys, welcome back. Uh, those of you who are watching will have seen last week that I brew up an old laptop while I was trying to flash the ECU for the Rockstar. Thankfully, it was a, uh, a cheap second-hand laptop I bought off of a mate for 50 bucks, so it wasn't a huge loss, but it's still a pain. I still wanted that. That was perfect for what I needed for tuning Harry and everything else, so uh, I'm gonna have to get another one, which really does suck. But um, if you wanna catch up on that, I'll put a link up above and uh, you can see where we were going with that. Today, we are back working on Harry. Um, I'm going to put Rockstar on hold for a little while, just while we're sorting that out. Uh, but Harry, last you saw, I had a couple of issues on the dyno that it was the torque was dropping off sharply at 6,000 RPM. And there are a few different um, ideas thrown around and uh, I thought it might have been um, low on spark, uh, which we obviously checked. And uh, we know the spark system is all good. Uh, both banks of coil packs are running well. Um, I learned a lot from a lot of the comments. Uh, obviously, I didn't realize at the time that uh, Twin spark runs a lot less ignition advanced than uh, what a single spark does. Single spark in these cars often runs sort of 28, 30 degrees of uh, ignition timing. Whereas with a twin spark, because the flame front burns much faster, it actually runs a lot less timing. So this is running at the top about 18 degrees, I think. So with that sorted out, uh, what I think the real issue with this car is, is the exhaust, is basically the headers are too small on this car. They are running about a one and a half inch uh, diameter header, which I think is a little bit small. So we will we'll go and tackle that in, in a little bit. Before we jump into that though, I just want to run you through a couple of things that I've done on this car since uh, we last talked. So those of you who watched my uh, Luftwasser event will have noticed that I got a crack in the windscreen and that was a real pain considering how much of a nightmare it was to put the uh, windscreen in. So since then I've had the windscreen replaced with a 993 windscreen and I thought I would have had to use the later completely black rubber to go into it but I thought I'd go up to a 993 windscreen because it's got the antenna recessed into the windscreen. So it's got a little black line that you won't be able to see it from there, but it runs around the edge and runs a line up the middle. That is the uh, the windscreen antenna. And I wanted to try and run that because my current antenna that I had was terrible, it was sort of stick on thing inside. So I've run that along with a cheap booster I got off of eBay and uh, it's so much better. The antenna works fantastically. Now, I thought I would have had to run the windscreen with the 993 style uh, completely black uh, sort of glue-in rubbers, but uh, it's exactly the same size as the old windscreen, so it works with the old rubbers as well. And um, even though the other rubbers potentially would be better in adding rigidity to the car because it, it glues the windscreen in, there's less potential for wind noise, they actually did a much better job of fitting the windscreen than I did. So this rubber fits beautifully now, whereas when I had it, it uh, yeah, it didn't. And this is the same rubber, they just reused it and re, uh, refit it. The other bonus with the 993 windscreen is it's got the, uh, the sort of the blue tint at the top. And one of the things I found in this car um, is that it is just, uh, it's such a fishbowl that I was getting sunburnt whenever I drove this car in the summer everywhere. It just seemed to magnify the sun through every window. And uh, I found that if I, in summer I had to put long sleeves on, I was just getting burnt the whole time. My arms were just getting fried. So uh, I think that's a great upgrade and I'm quite happy with it. Now, another thing I've done since is I have upgraded my taco. So one of the issues I had with my taco was that uh, many of you would have seen it was, it was bouncing around. Now, there's a couple of reasons for tacos to bounce. One of them is there can be interference with the signal, so it, it'll sort of jump uh, erratically, whereas mine was a dampening issue. So basically, it would just sort of, it, when, it, when you're revving really fast, it would, it would take a while to settle down. So it was pretty useless at uh, high revs to sort of see what you're doing. So uh, I had a look, I tried a couple of different ways with capacitors and stuff to try and uh, dampen it down, which didn't seem to work. And I really have no idea with electrical stuff as you would have seen last week. So um, what I actually did is uh, the, there's a tiny little spike that sticks out in the center of the needle. And 
Um, basically what I've done is I tried to do some physical dampening. So I wanted sleeve to go over that little spike to try and just um, create a little tiny bit of resistance with the cover of the, the uh, with the face of the dial. And what I found is I used uh, some wire, some just uh, some wire insulation. I stripped the wire out. So I had the plastic insulation that I stuck over. I used a couple of uh, bits of wire inside each other, obviously uh, a bigger gauge and a smaller gauge, and stuck that over the needle. And now it has actually dampened the gauge. The trouble is, is it does, it's not perfectly even. It does sort of get stuck a bit, but it does still work and, and move. It's not perfect. It's some ways it's better than it was before, other ways it's worse, so uh, it's not the proper solution. I probably have to send it away and get fixed at some stage. The trouble is I just don't want to be without the gauge for months. It seems like all the uh, the places who re restore these gauges take a very long time, have a massive back weight, uh, uh, like backlog, and um, yeah, I, I don't want to be without it. So that's what I've done in here. Uh, another thing I've done also is uh, I've actually gone back to my mono Preto Proto Tipo steering wheel. Now, I've had a few issues with the uh, the different wheels. When I first had this wheel on, I found I didn't have the leverage at high, at, at when I was really on it on a bumpy road. It felt like I wasn't completely in control. The wheel was too small. Uh, so I switched from this 350mm steering wheel to a 380. Now, the 380, um, there's less room in here. Um, it did sort of come closer to my legs and it was a bit, it, it felt a little bit too big, but I could see my gauges again, which I thought was fantastic. Um, and then I actually sat in a friend's car who had an offset steering wheel hub. And that's what I've ordered for this. So this is, I think it's about a 15 mil offset. So now the steering wheel, there's a, there's a hub that bolts onto the boss kit that um, in the normal spot, but then it's got offset screw holes that sit the steering wheel a little bit higher so as you see me turn the wheel it does go up and down a bit but I thought that would really be an issue for me I thought I would really not like it but um, you don't notice it that much when you when you're actually driving because you're, you're only probably turning that sort of distance you're not turning a great deal the offset I found has given me that little bit more leverage that I wanted so I'm feeling I have control and also by offsetting it up, I can see my gauges again, which is a big plus because I really want to be able to see the gauges. And that's one of the issues with this wheel. I love this wheel. It's the, I think it's the nicest wheel for this car. And the offset actually makes it so it works. So I am quite happy. All right, so that's a lot of talking uh, to bring me back to what we're actually doing today. So as I mentioned, I feel that uh, this car is restricted at the top end by the headers that are just too small. So they, they're restricting the flow of air at the very high end so that it just can't push enough through and that's what's making my torque drop off just at the top end. So um, what I did is I reached out to Design 911 and they actually sent me these uh, one and five eighths inch uh, headers for this car. So I think this is the right upgrade. See, one and three quarters would be too big one and five eighths is actually, I think it's about a 20% increase in, um, in flow from memory. Um, so it doesn't sound like much, but it is actually uh, going to be better. And these are a nice uh, sort of tune length uh, deal that I think should do the job quite nicely. Um, I'll put a link to these in the description. Um, I am really happy that they, uh, I mean, the guys got them to me within less than two weeks. They look really, really decent. So. Uh, I'm going to fit them to the car and uh, and then see what we can do about putting another muffler on it. But before we do that, I want to go and get a baseline for the car. So last time you saw me just doing a video baseline and many of you suggested I should take a log on the ECU, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go back to the same, same place as I did before. It is much colder today, so I'll, uh, I'll give you the temp when we actually go, but... Uh, we will do another run, we will log it, and uh, I'll put those logs up so that you guys can see them, and uh, we'll see how we go. All right, I have my laptop set up. I'm on the same road that I used before, but I actually am ready to take a log now. I um, 
the current temperature is 8.7 degrees so it's quite a um, it's a brisk morning it's definitely colder than when I did my uh, last run and that's going to factor into things currently well the log is going to tell you but the cylinder head temperature is 44 degrees and the inlet, inlet air temperature is 9 degrees so um, anyway we're going to take a log now and uh, then we've got our baseline let's give it a go So I've got my baseline. Now the next thing to do is to get this exhaust off and uh, start putting those nice shiny new uh, Design 911 headers back on. And uh, the issue I have is that I have the Al Ferrari on the hoist, Rockster, not driving underneath. It's too hard to move me out of the way. So I'm just gonna do this on the ground. It's not that hard to do. I'm gonna put some chocks under the front wheels, jack the back up and get this exhaust changed over. Alright, so uh, I've got one side in that was really straightforward, just done, bolt and bolt it straight on. Um, you can see here, I don't know if it really makes that, shows up in camera, but you can sort of see the, uh, the, the difference in the exhaust. You can also see that this is pretty old and beaten up and um, yeah, just a bit bigger, nicer, shinier, nice, as I said, nice equal length uh, design. I'm, I'm a fan so far, so uh, let's get the last other side bolted in and... Um, then we need to look at what we're going to do about getting a muffler on it. They are looking really good. That is a nice upgrade from uh, what was on there before. All right, so we are back to having microphone issues that you might have seen in the Al Ferrari episode. So um, anyway, we've got to put the muffler on the car. Now, this is the muffler you may have seen me build in previous episode where I try to make it switchable and it was too quiet and it just didn't work and it was a very expensive, labor-intensive uh, waste of time. Now, this old thing is the original muffler that I modified uh, way back five years ago when I was first building the car, and that's the one that I've run on the car uh, the whole time. I've never actually run the other muffler in any dyno situation or anything else. But the muffler I'm going to use is this, which is a two-in, two-out, two-and-a-half-inch straight-through muffler. So basically, the uh, concept is going to be I'm going to run one side of the exhaust through the top and out, and the other side going the opposite direction through the bottom and out. So they're going to cross over in the middle. Uh, that's the plan. So let's uh, see if we can work out a way to mount it up and um, give it a go. Alright, so I've got my muffler mounted in now and uh, I'm happy with the location. It's nice and square and straight. It looks good. I've got to now start working on joining up my headers to the muffler. So 
to do that, what I've got to do is, um, first of all, I've got to find a way to attach them. I want to make them uh, disconnect here. These are designed to bolt onto the factory mufflers, which obviously I don't have. Uh, so I'm going to swap it over to put some V-bands on it. I've got this donut to make some bends and a bit of straight. So let's start cutting and pasting. All right, I have a, uh, a very hot V-band welded onto the end that I salvaged off of my other exhaust system. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's still toasty. I've now got a couple of these uh, Raceworks O2 sensor bungs uh, in stainless steel that I'm going to put onto the end of the exhaust now. So I need to drill a hole and mount this and weld it on so that I can put my O2 sensors back into the car and uh, make sure that all works. So let's start drilling. Alright, so what you can see here is I spent a fair bit of time getting a, a jig set up so that I can put my exhaust tips in the exact right spot so that they're level and evenly spaced and, uh, and, and even with the car uh, because this is sort of a critical part. You want it to look right. I want them to be perfectly square with each other so I've got this uh, piece of timber here. I'm now going to put on some sort of frames, so a couple of blocks of timber to hold them nice and square so then the jig is there and I can start mixing and matching with these things to actually uh, sort of weld them up and get them to join up with the exhaust as it is. Um, it's a bit of work but it's what needs to be done to make it uh, look right. Let's just hope I don't have to do this again afterwards. I am really worried this is going to be too loud. Okay, so I have uh, welded up this side to the lower part of the muffler and then this exhaust over this side, if you, can, if you can see in there, I've just tacked it up to the upper part. So obviously this side is going to go out from here now and go into the lower and the other side out from the exhaust and into the upper so they cross over in the middle. So let's start putting some V-band clamps on and then trying to get make this bit match this bit. So I've just realized I've caused myself issues in here. So I didn't notice that uh, this V-band clamp is actually too close to the block here to, uh, or the, the engine case to put the clamp on. So I'm gonna have to move this clamp forward slightly. But I've also realized that because of the angle of where this tube is getting over the top of this other one, I can't just sort of do one, I'm gonna have to go up and curve up and over and then around. I'm gonna to have to do uh, a couple of different bends. I can't just sort of go 45, 90. I'm gonna to have to go, you know, 60, 30, 45 or something like that. Makes it more complicated, but we'll get there. Okay, so lying under the car, I've tacked together my exhaust, so I've got this lower run here, goes down through underneath, and comes out the other side. That run goes out through the top, across through the top, and out the back. So now, I have to pull it all out and weld it all together. So I have this whole thing, it's all welded up now. Um, it's not the prettiest, it's not terrible. Um, 
No, I did not back purge it. Uh, yes, there is some minor sugaring inside, which I don't really care about because it's gonna go out the exhaust. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with how uh, it's going to perform. So let's hope it bolts back in and then we can see how loud it is. still smoking away um, yeah that sounds really good it's not too loud I think I have finally found the exhaust for this I don't think it needs a switch I think that's that's good as it is it definitely doesn't sound too loud inside it doesn't sound too loud out here but it still sounds good so um, still gonna hear what it sounds like when I actually get out and drive it and see if uh, that exhaust made some difference um, I am I am really a fan of uh, how it's all gone together. Uh, that Design 911 uh, headers look really good. Um, there'll be a link in the description to them. Go and check out Design 911. They, um, they do help out uh, Home Built here. And uh, they're a great partner to Push Parts by Jeff.com as well. Generally, I use Push Parts by Jeff quite a bit to search for parts. And Design 911 are usually one of the best deals out there anyway. And if you do go through Push Parts by Jeff.com, um, it does help us out as well. Check them out. Um, I am very, very happy. Next episode, we are going to get out and um, see how it actually goes. It's getting late, it's quite dark now. Um, so I'm not going to get the uh, results to this, this episode, but I think next week we'll take it back out. We'll test it again. We'll see how it runs uh, on the uh, open road and see if it makes a difference and we can try and see if we can compare those uh, logs and things like that. See if we can get, uh, see if we've actually made a uh, performance upgrade as well as a uh, a visual one. So, uh, alright, guys. As always, like, subscribe, uh, and if you need to find parts for any of your Porsches, check out Design 911 and PorschePartsByJeff.com. Alright, guys. See you next time.